Hi, Patty. How are you? I'm actually all set up on time. We'll start in a minute. You're all so good at timing. Me, not so much. Hmm, hi, Tammy. You were early. You were here before me. Hey, Jennifer. I watch the clock because I'm so afraid I'm going to be late. Just gonna give it another minute or two and then we'll start. At the end of class I will show you. Uh, you can shade pistachio mint with lip lip uh, I speak English with leaf green also. Hi Linda. Hey Brenda. Um so at the end of class I'll show you Monday. I totally forgot what we were doing in April. So I pulled those. So I have April's, I have both classes to show you. <laughs> Hi, Liz. I have to tell you, you always make me smile. Hey, Emily. Leaf green. If you don't have leaf green, you can go to forest green or do something in the yellow green family, not the blue green family. So forest green will work, leaf green will work. Um, you could even use mistletoe, any of those. Hey Virginia, you're welcome. All right, you all ready? I think so, right? Otherwise we'll just have a checklist, which would not be a good thing. We'd probably get in trouble. Okay, so you all know this is beginner class. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Brenda. So I'll go over floating. So I'll do more technique work than I usually do in my Monday classes. So we'll do, we'll go over floating, we'll go over dry brushing, we'll go over stippling. This piece, just so you all know, hey Rochelle that I bought at Dollar Tree and it's cut out and that's the way it came. Somebody had told me that they don't have them because they were last year's surfaces. So I don't know if that's accurate everywhere. If you can't find it, just put it on a board. So take the line drawing and put it on a board and make it look beautiful. Okay, it'll be a lot of fun to do it on a board. This is pretty flimsy, so I will probably mount it on a board. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. So, that's where we're at. Ta da! Okay. So, you should be base coated like this. But I'm going to go through basic base coating anyway, because a lot of people don't do it correctly. And they have a hard time with it. So I'm just going to take some of my Lilac Meadow. And just so that I can show you. And I'll do it on the back. So I always use a shader. So I use a flat brush. Um, it's a personal preference. Some people use filberts. Some use round. For me it's flat brushes. And I'm going to pick up a good amount of paint. And when you base coat, you're really pulling it out. So it doesn't matter how much you have to start, you're gonna pull as much as you can. Let's see what I'm doing. I should have done the color I was gonna paint it, huh? You don't want to do this because, I don't know if you can see those lumps. 
if you have these lumps there, I'm under the camera, it will dry like this. And there's no way around that. You want nice and smooth. And that's pulling it. Now, usually I will still be a little bit transparent. Not a big deal. Once it's dry, I'll go in and put another coat and that'll take care of that. Often, people just this because they think they're saving time. But you get this really lumpy background that you can't get rid of. So you don't want that. Okay? Hey, Shirley. Yeah, Linda, when I was in Louisiana last month, I looked for them and there were none of them. I know. I'm sorry. If you, like I said, just do it on a board. And then you just let it dry. Okay? You can tell if it's dry when you hold it on an angle. If it's got a shine, it's still wet. If it's got no shine, it's dry. Okay? So we'll come in and we base coat each letter. E um, each letter and a bunny. I put two coats on all of these. All right. Now, to make my piece dimensional, and I should have touched this up, to make my piece dimensional, dark makes the item recede, light brings it towards us. Now, I want to show you a couple of things. You see here how I got blue on my pink when I was base coating? That's an easy fix. Just come in with the pink and just get that blue right out. Okay? And that'll go right out. Okay? When you're base coating, and just know that I'm going to move a little slower tonight because this is beginner, so you're going to learn a lot of basics. And some of you may know them, and some of you, it's a really good refresher course, and for those of you who are real beginners, take notes. It's There's a lot of information that I will give you. And by the way, if you have questions, ask them. I'm happy to answer them. All that you want. Okay? Um, I will answer you here. If I miss it, which I usually don't, I'll answer you after, too. Alright, so, when you're base coating, and whenever you have pieces like this, there are corners that meet, okay? It's really important that you go right to that point because if you don't, let's do this. They'll be back with letters, but let's put the P in here. Okay, so you can see here are my points. Now, if I took my letter next to it and I went like this and I didn't meet that point it doesn't make sense see how that letter doesn't make sense because it doesn't go right to the point that's with anything you do when you have a cutout so important so they make sense and I just keep wiping this so that it doesn't get all over when I turn it over all right so when you're base coating double check that all your letters go to your points. That's number one. Number two, I base coat one color. It makes it much easier when you sand it and then you just base coat your colors around it. Personally, I picked Cactus Flower because it's a really good opaque coverage. You could have done any of these colors and painted over it. Okay, you all ready? Okay, so we need moody blue. Let's do moody blue first. Now you need a flat brush to float. I use a chisel blender because it's a shorter brush. 
Look at the difference in these two bristles. So you see how much longer this bristle is than this one? This brush, because it's shorter bristles, is much easier to control. So I always use chisel blenders. I know people say they're for oils, but you will find if you use them for floating, you'll have an easier time. Okay. There are I'm going to break it here. Four steps to floating. And if you say them as you're doing it, you'll have a much easier time. Wet, blot, load, blend. Every time you load your brush to float, you need to do those steps. When you lay T E C H. Okay. When you lay your brush on your surface, your technique is all the bristles on all the surface all the time. If you have a hard time floating, take a screenshot right now so that you have that written down. Okay. So, the easiest way to say this is we're going to wet, blot, load, blend. Okay? When we move our brush, we're going to have all the bristles on all the surface all the time. And I'll show you what all that means. So, I use scrap paper. I'm going to wet. My brush is going to go in my water you will see a shine. Here are the bristles of your brush. Here's the ferrule. Here's the handle. You'll see a shine on your brush. And I tell you this because every brush is different. So this will give you, no matter what brush you're using, how to load it properly. So we wet. See the shine. We'll blot. We blot flat. We're going to go down. And as soon as the shine dissipates and hits the ferrule, we lift. It will leave some moisture in your brush, but it'll leave just the right amount. Now, if I were to use this brush, this one went right away, so watch. That one was done. This one takes a little longer. So it's easier to tell you to do that than to um, have you count or anything. So we did step one and two. We wet, we blot. When we corner load, we hold our brush. We're going to load just the corner of the brush. Try to hold your brush as perpendicular to your palette as you can, as opposed to on an angle. You'll get a better load. And I'm just going to load a little bit. And then on my scrap paper, I'm going to blend. I'm going to blend in very short strokes, walking away from the color. Now, these are pretty small, so if you look at it next to my bristles, it's probably, I don't know, half an inch, something like that. If you do this, you can see, see that skipping? That skipping is, you don't have enough water in your brush, okay? If you didn't blot enough, your color will pull all the way over, and that's you didn't blot enough, okay? So, wet, blot, want to load, we'll get to painting, and blend four steps. And if you say it every time, you won't miss a step. You blend until you have a graduation of color. I started here and I graduate. Okay. Now, when you float, you're going to keep your brush perfectly flat. Remember what I said, all the bristles on all the surface all the time. So I'm going to come along the left side of the letter 
try to go the whole length. I don't care if you go from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top. The paint is towards the left side and it's graduating in. What you don't want is you don't want this. You see the difference between the nice smooth float and this choppy float? Which drives me crazy. Okay. If you didn't get far enough, start it again. Okay. Now, when you're floating, dark will make the item recede, light will bring it towards us. If you have a yucky float, take a mop, and what the mop does is it'll soften your float. It's You're not moving your mop, you're just lightly up and down tapping. And that's just going to soften. Okay. Now when you have letters, this is a left side, but this is a left side too. You see that? This is a left side and this is a left side. So it's not necessarily only this side. Now what this, this is going to do, and well, let's do the blue letters and then I'll show you the difference. And I'm here. Now you can see every bristle is on my surface. There's only paint on a little corner, which is what we call side loading. So that will keep my paint graduating. Okay? We're going to come down here and we're going to float left sides. So I'm, I'm going to start about here. I'm going to come down the left side. And every time you go back until it becomes second nature, do all four steps. Wet, blot, load, blend. I know I say it a lot. And I say it a lot because the more I say it, the more it'll just become habit to you. Okay, that's the left side. Here's the left side. I have every single bristle on my surface. And here's the left side. If you don't have the colors I have or I used, use a darker value of the color. So let me explain. Just we'll go a little bit past beginner so that you understand. Values. Values are the colors we use. So we base coat in the medium value. We'll shade in a darker value. And then we'll highlight in a lighter value. So on this piece, we'll have our three values. Sometimes we'll go to a five value scale, but this will give us the depth we want. So now my letter, which here looks perfectly flat, here is kind of tilting because this side is pushed down more. So there's more dimension to it, okay? <laughs> hey, Allison, hey, Michelle. All right, so then we're gonna get some deep burgundy. If anybody's had, okay, I'm gonna try that again. If anybody has any questions, just let me know. Okay, so we wet, blot, load, blend. And we're still left sides. Now, if you're not comfortable with the string in there, just take it out. Take it out, put it back in. Now, 
was a bad flu. When you use your mop, your mop has to be dry. Don't use it wet. And if you need to clean it, use, well, that's not true. If you need to clean it during class, use a baby wipe to clean it. And then after class is over, you can wash it because then it's fine. And I'm here. So that's the left side. And remember, you want the graduation of color. Sometimes when the value change is very different as the pink to the burgundy, it's a little bit, um, not that it's harder, but it kind of tricks your eye a little bit more. So just blend, make sure you blend it out enough so that it's not really, really dark. I would say this is too dark. Okay. We'll come down here. And make sure I'm still on. And we're going to float left sides. We're still on the left side. Go, oh, that's not a good one, huh? all the way down. Now, if anybody has a problem floating, tell me what your problem is and I'll see if I can talk it out with you. Now here, on the E, that's my only left side. I'm going to go to the T. Push, oops, that was a bad one, huh? I'm going to push that under. And we're going to come down the left side. Now, if you get your paint where you don't want it, just grab a Q-tip. And I use Q-tips from the dollar store because they have less cotton on them. And you can just come in, damp with clean water, and just take off what you don't want. Okay? See, I got that off. Okay. Now we're going to move to mulberry. Now, mulberry is not a very common color. It's a color I happen to absolutely love show you that's mulberry so if you don't have mulberry plum will work um, you can go as dark as dioxazine if you want okay so now we're going to shade we're still on left sides I'm going to show you, shade the left side of the purples purple letters And I'll show you if we have time, which I think we probably will. Fun things you can do to play. I never know how long things are going to take. And I'm just softening. And hopefully you're all painting along with me. So now I'll go down. Remember I said all the left side. So this is a left side, but here's a left side too. Okay. And I just want to say something. If you're new to painting, this is a great class because we do technique because it's a beginner class. <laughs> Hi, Carolyn, darling. Just don't be late next week. We're okay tonight. Um, if you... <laughs> I lost track now. 
if you're um, new to floating, don't don't beat yourself up. Floating is a technique that you have to learn and you have to practice. Don't beat yourself up. If you float and you struggle, message me, message the library. They will get in touch with me, okay? Don't beat yourself up over floats. It's a technique, it's a learning process. I promise you, and I and I always tell the truth, um, every single person that paints started on day one. So we all started, we all learned, myself included. Um, so don't beat yourself up about not floating like I do, okay? Keep in mind, I paint every single day. And we were all new sometimes. Me too. Okay. Which is one of the reasons I love these beginner classes. Because when you do these and you learn, you, you there's such a sense of pride in learning how to do this. I'm still on left sides. And I know that there's a lot of information, but I believe that if you know why we do things, it'll help you to do them better. So that's one of my, my big things. So, so far you can see the difference. You see the difference in the depth from here to here, okay? Oh, Norma, I'm so glad. These are my favorite brushes. And you will find, okay, so here's something I will tell you. This brush will make a difference, number one. Pull out your leaf green. And number two, for anybody, and this is anybody, I know a lot of people use power paper, and they use power paper to as a palette, but they also use it to blend. I find when people are on their blending step of floating, they have a hard time with palette paper. So if you're having a hard time floating, try switching over to just plain old scrap paper, a piece of paper that you wrote on, a piece of paper from the, from your copy machine. Um, it makes a huge difference. I've had a lot of people, I've switched a lot of people over. And listen, it's one of those things that costs you zero to try it. If you struggle and you don't like it, switch back. Can't hurt. Okay, so we're in leaf green. We're still on the left sides. And Norma, FYI. Every one of my pieces I float on, so I do a lot of floating. It's one of my, somebody told me, I'm very, and he's very big in our painting world, and he told me I'm the queen of floating. <laughs> so I wear my nice little crown, nice and high on my head. I took it as a huge compliment which was good because I took his class and he doesn't float, so. He told me mine looks so good. And I said, yeah, well, secret, I floated. <laughs> okay, so we still do left sides. And you can see we're bringing our letters to life. Do you see that? Hey, Jane, I'm glad you're here. We're going to get you floating on your dog. Not on your real dog, on your dog painting. Okay, so we're down the left side. And FYI, this video will stay up on the library website. 
It'll be under the Live tab. At some point, they'll move it to the Events tab. But it'll stay up. So if you have a question about floating, if you need to see it again, if you need to see a technique, if you need to hear my voice say wet blot load blend, it will be there for you to do that. Go back and do it. You know, use, use the video to advance yourself, to learn. Okay, true okra. If you don't have true okra, which is an older color, you can use um, you can use antique gold and basic color theory. You can take yellow and <coughs> add purple to it because they're complementary colors on the color wheel, and you'll get a darker yellow also. Okay, so. We're still floating. Wet, blot, load, blend. Now, if you look at my scrap paper, they're all little teeny tiny strokes until I have a graduation of color. Okay? And we're going to float down the left side of the yellow. My brush is perfectly flat. And yes, if you don't have this brush, you really should. It really makes a difference. And believe me, I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. I just think that if you only had a few um, things to get, a good, bra a good floating brush is important. And only use it for floating. You only want to use it for floating. Because you don't want to ruin it. So here's our left sides. Now remember, which this is very obvious, this left side. But this is a left side too, right here. See that? Oh. Norma, I really don't want to answer that <laughs> because you're not going to like my answer. Um, the answer to that question is, is when we go back to the library, I believe we are done on live. I will, I will still do stuff on my personal page. I'll, I will find a way to do at least one a month. Okay. And I would venture to say, I have been doing these for over a year, that with the restrictions here in New York starting to lift, um, it's going to be sooner than later. I'm sorry, it's not the answer you want. But um, my girls here... I think they want me back. <laughs> you know. But I'm not going anywhere. Hang around my page. I'll still be there. I know you don't like that answer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not going anywhere. I have to tell you one thing that this pandemic did is it has brought a lot of new people into my world, which I'm very, very thankful for. And it's given me the opportunity to show people so much that um, they didn't have before, which is, is very important to me. So, I will not, I, I eventually, will not be doing live on the library. I don't believe so. Yes, I will be there. Um, I, I, I haven't discussed it with them. I have discussed going back. Um, I don't think we're going to stay online, though. Okay, so. All, I've done all my left sides. So now I've taken my very flat 
base coat. And I've made it dimensional because dark makes the item recede. Aw, Patty, thank you. I'm not going anywhere yet. <laughs> You're still stuck with me. And like I said, I'll still be on my page. So don't, don't, I'll be there. We'll probably have less people, but I'll be there. Um, so we've now created some dimension. Okay. I want to take the same colors and I'm going to turn so you can see because my hand will be in your way. We're going to go back to the moody blue. And now we're going to shade the bottom of each letter. And this will go much faster because there's not as many bottoms. This is kind of a bottom, huh? Now remember, your paint goes towards the, the edge. Okay, remember that. So in this case, it flipped this way. Here, in the bottom. Mm, this is a bottom. Oh, Bev, you're welcome. It does just as much for me as it does for you guys. Where do you get those great brushes? Okay, so, Vicki, I use Dynasty Black Gold for, and mine's a 14 chisel blender. Maureen Baker sells them. So if you go to, I believe it's Maureen underscore Baker dot com. I will look it up for you, not now, but um, she's on Facebook too. And just tell her it's the brushes I use and she'll know because I am forever sending people to her. But it's a it's fabulous brush. And when we get to the rigor, that's another one that'll, um, you'll love. Yes, I know that there have been bright spots in the pandemic. I agree. It's the bottom. Oh, probably off camera, sorry. But we need to get back to, to our real world. We really do. Okay, so I'm here. These are all the bottoms on the E's. I'm in the deep burgundy. We're using the same colors we floated in the first place. Okay. The bottom here. I know Norma, you asked me last time and I kind of evaded that question. <laughs> I answered you, but I kind of evaded it. I'm sorry. Okay, now we'll pop over to the purple. And, okay, so when I floated down the left side, I didn't do the, the bottoms also, because what happens is this, this part here would be wet, and as I do this, I would pull all this off. So when you have two floats that kind of connect, I don't know how else to say that, you just come in and you wait till it dries. Otherwise you're gonna pull one off, okay? So that's the best way to do that. So I did all the left sides and then I came back. Okay. We'll hop to the green. Now we're in the leaf green. And you should have all of these colors on your palette. Okay. Oh, thank you, Linda. Thank you, Jane. So, Vicki, Linda and Jane both posted Maureen's link in there for you. And she also sells paint, so she's pretty good. When Deco Art doesn't have what I need, I run to her. And she's really sweet. Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> but she is really a doll. 
So you see what I did? I just got green here on my purple. So go my damn Q-tip and I'll just come in and take it right off. Okay. I'm still on my bottoms. And I know that I'm going slower than I normally do. This is our beginner class. And it's really good for technique. You could learn so much. Okay, so now I'll go to my true okra. And I'll float the bottoms. Oh, not like that. I picked up deep burgundy in my brush. Not really sure how, but I like it. And I just come in. And And then, I want to show you something. I'm here, I'm here, and I'm here. Now, remember what I said, the reason we use color, we use color to create dimension. Besides the fact it looks beautiful and it's colorful and you say, yay, you know, it's nice, springy, eastery colors. It's to create dimension. So we've taken our flat letters and we've pushed them down. Okay? But you also have to remember we have some elements on top of each other. And on some of this we broke the rules. But you see how my dark is here? So it's pushing my purple letter down and pulling up my green letter. Okay? I know this is a right side, but we have a bunny, and I know I'm upside down. I have to float outside where the bunny hits the letter because I want to pull the bunny up and I want to push the letter down. So can you see what I did? Now you can see my bunny is on top of that letter. It doesn't look like it's connected to that letter, okay? And that's how we use color to manipulate our eye. That's really what we're doing. So the dark pushes it down. The dark is pushing the letter down, and it's pulling up our bunny, okay? <laughs> I am here, Janet. I am here. Did you get lost? Okay. So we're going to let these dry for a minute and we're going to work on the bunny. Okay? Now I had you base coat the bunny in honey brown because he needs a base. Okay? So we're going to take our deer foot and a deer foot looks like a deer foot. So it looks like the hoof of a deer. The long part, which is the front, is the toe and the back short part is a heel so if it was a deer's foot that's exactly how it is okay you need some honey brown and you need some toffee when i tell you to get paint you only need little bits you don't need a lot of paint okay so you need a little bit of honey brown and a little bit of toffee if you don't have toffee, you can use mocha, light mocha, um, anything but white. Because white is going to look very um, stark. It'll change the honey a lot. Okay. So now I'm going to take... <laughs> Sometimes I get lost too. More often than I care to admit. I'm going to take my deer foot. The one thing I... We're going to pick up both colors and we're going to stipple. But the one thing that's really important is you don't have a connecting line right in the middle. So I don't do half honey and half um, toffee. All right? So I'm going to put... It's just something I do. I always put the lighter color on the toe. So... 
I'm going to do more than half. And then when I put the honey on, I'm going to do more than half. So there's not a connecting line. They kind of go into each other. And then I always tap on my scrap paper first so that I now look at my brush. I ha don't have all those globs of paint. If you have all those globs of paint, you're going to have globs of paint on your piece, which you don't want. So using my brush straight up and down think of a pressure from one to ten I'm one and a half maybe a two nothing more than that and I'm just up and down this is called stippling reload whenever you need to that's better if you get too light add more honey brown to your brush if you get too dark add more toffee to your brush I want to have those two colors. So can you see those two colors? That'll give me a furry look without um, having a whole load of hair. Like I don't have to create hair. And I'm just and make sure you're not doing this. You're not making polka dots. You don't want that. You're going, I'm here and I'm going right into it. So it's all blending together. Whenever you use a deer foot, just, just be careful you're not making polka dots. Okay, polka dots are not a good thing. They don't look natural. I have more honey brown on my brush than I do toffee. But that's just a personal preference. If you want a lighter bunny, absolutely now look I hit my letter a little bit so that he looks like he has a fuzzy hand it's okay to be lighter that's just a personal preference okay it's not right or wrong okay so I'm here now I'm very light here because I didn't blot and I'll keep trying to pull some of that out of there. Again, tap over. And this is this is too much paint and too much pressure. So we'll just keep trying to pull some out. You hear that tapping? So I'll pick up a little bit of honey. And I'll tap some honey in. Now back to and sometimes you just don't pay attention and you just, your pressure is more. But when you have more pressure, you're going to have very solid color. You're not going to have an airy color. So just be careful. Keep your pressure at, out of one to ten, one and a half. You want it nice and light. My, all of my bristles are on my surface. Will you load again, please? Yes, I will load again, please. Give me one second. And this is the trick. People have a hard time with the deer foot for a couple of these reasons. So, whoops. And you can do the tail or not do the tail. It doesn't make a difference. So, let me wipe out my brush so you can see. My brush is dry. My brush is dry. My, here's my toe and here's my heel. My toe gets the light. I'm more than halfway or even if you did a quarter then go more than three quarters so I'm about there now when I load my honey my honey is going to come into my toffee so I'll go here okay so I don't have a dividing line I don't go straight to my surface I tap here until I'm blended and I have just a little bit of paint left you see that? And then my pressure is like a one and a half. And this is what it looks like without the base coat. It's that light. Okay. I'm nice and light. And I'm just blending it together. I'm working in the same area. And I just keep walking from there. I'm not this. Okay. After, Jennifer, did that help you?
after I've got my whole thing on, then you can wash your brush. If you have a wet deer foot and you use a wet deer foot, the bristles clump together because they're wet. So you will not get the light and airiness of it, which you need. You're welcome. You won't get the light airiness of it. So, and make sure, FYI, when you're pouncing, if you're pouncing on your paper towel, you're not pouncing in a wet area because that will wet your brush. People do that and they don't realize that that's what's doing it. Okay, so, so far we've done base coating, we've done loading, we've done stippling. We're going to transfer a pattern in a minute. We're going to go back to our letters. So, we want to bring some of our letters up to make it 3D because we have our medium value, we have our dark value, and we need our light value. So, we're going to use warm white. I'm going to show you some dry brushes. You can use, if I pulled them, we'd be okay. You can use a Mezzaluna. You can use a sable dry brush, or you can use a stencil brush. So, this is the stencil brush I use. It's very soft, but it's firm enough. So you can, I dry brush with this. You can dry brush with a sable. And you can dry brush with a mezzaluna, which I have no idea where it is. Hmm. It's a little weird. All right, oh, because it's in the bucket. <laughs> yeah, I pulled my brushes for tonight. All right, they all give you a different kind of dry brush. So I'll just quickly, oh, we might have a problem. Okay. I've been sketching. All right, so if you use a mezzaluna, I'm going to show you in green. I load it. All of these are dry. I load, I pinch. And then I just dry brush like this. And I get my lines here. Okay? This brush is washable. You can wash it and then pinch it dry. When you use a stencil brush, let me use a different one. So that, because I want to use that on here. When you use a stencil brush, you pick up the paints and scrub it off and then you dry brush in little circles okay so you see the difference between that type of dry brush and that type of dry brush and then if you I'm going to do this in blue a sable you pick up paint you just lightly rub the side because this is a little different. You never want to scrub. And on the side, you just lightly dry brush. And this is a much softer dry brush. So any of the three ways is perfectly fine. So it just depends on what kind of dry brush you want to use. I, in this case, am going to use my stencil brush. So I'm going to pick up warm white, and I have a good amount of paint on there. I'm going to scrub. This brush is scrubbable. Scrub until there's almost nothing left. Okay? And then I'm going to come in, there's a good amount of pressure, and I'm going to dry brush the center of each letter. Now you see how little's on there so far? When you dry brush, you're going to bring up your color slowly. It might take me two or three times. Okay, I'm going to come in. I'm going to dry brush. It's probably bigger than I want. But. 
Make sure you don't use one that's too big. Okay. And make sure you're scrubbing it off because if you're not, you're going to get a blob of paint and you're going to be miserable. I'm going to say, Linda, I'm not dry brushing right. I'm going to say, oh, I know. Okay, and I'm just scrubbing in here. Okay, and now I'm, look at the difference between my lettering here and my lettering here. That's just a dry brush. Okay. Here. And I'm just following the shape of the letter that I'm dry brushing. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, not tonight, but if you wanted to and you had a bunch of dry brushes, because you need a different dry brush for each color. You could dry brush, as opposed to doing white on all of them, you could do a lighter blue. So you could do like blue chiffon. And on the pink, you can do um, highlight flesh has been discontinued. So could probably do cotton candy. The green you could do pistachio mint. Uh, the yellow you would do white. And the purple hmm, you could probably do plain lilac. You could also do the base coat color tipped in one white. Okay. So, there are so many options. Oh, look, we missed the E. And I know that I'm giving you extra things, but I think the more you know, the better you'll be. And please, please, if, if you're brand new to painting, because this is a beginner class, don't be too hard on yourself. It takes time. It takes time. And you will find that it's a wonderful hobby. It's a wonderful job. It's a wonderful everything. And I'm just brightening up some places. And that's, you have to go back and add more. You can't glob it all on at once. So we'll just go back and add more. Sorry, I didn't put out enough paint. Okay. Now, well, I'll tell you after. I don't know if we'll have time, but I'll give you some options to play. Okay. Now, I've just made that really dimensional. You see the difference? And after I'm done, then I can clean my brush. Thank you all for spending your Thursday night here with me. We do have a lot of fun, and there's a lot to learn. Okay, so now our letters are technically done. Here we have our bunny. Now, beginner class, so I will teach you how to see your pattern. I traced my pattern onto tracing paper, and I do that so you can line it up. Okay? I line my pattern up. Now, always put your pattern down, okay? This goes first. This is graphite paper. Graphite paper kind of works like carbon paper, but don't use carbon paper. Carbon paper will get everywhere and you won't be able to get it off. So there's a dull side and there's a shiny side. And you can see, you can use this a hundred times. 
well, probably more than that. The, it's shiny side down. So I'm just going to hold this. If you feel more comfortable, tape it. People tape it. I'm just going to slide it under. Now, if you need to transfer the separation, the nose, the mouth, the eye, and if you want to put the bow in. Okay. I kind of just lift like this and make sure it's there, and then I lift. Now, just say that I didn't get it where I wanted, then I'll just take my pattern and I'll reline it back up and I'll redo it. Okay? The good thing about graphite is as I'm touching it, it's not like carbon paper, so it doesn't get everywhere. And you can just erase it with an eraser. Okay? Which is a wonderful thing. So you'll see right here. See how I'm not at that point where I told you you have to be? So just come in and I'll erase some of it. And it comes right off. So the one color I forgot to put on your list is burnt umber. So if you don't have burnt umber, take your toffee and add a tiny bit of black to it. That will give you a darker color. And we're gonna go back to floating. We're gonna go back to our 14 chisel blender. And let me just say something. If you have a small area, like when we float in the eye, don't move to a smaller brush. Never go lower than a 12. Don't move to a smaller brush. Just put less on the less paint on the corner of your brush, okay? So just like before, we wanted to create some dimension. Whoops, sorry. We're gonna float wet, blot, corner load in brown, and blend. I want to separate his hand, so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna float outside his hand, arm, not hand, arm. My paint is towards his arm because we want to bring up the arm. Okay? So see what I did? I want to separate. Oh, I got stuff in the way. Sorry. I'll move this. I want to separate his ears. So. I'm on the back ear towards the front ear so that we push down the ear and we pull up this ear, okay? And I always pull towards me. So even if I was painting, I'm, I'm staying out of your way with my hand, but even if I weren't, I would still be painting upside down like that. So move your surface so your hand is comfortable. We're going to float the front of his chest and the front of his body. I'm not going to float the front of his foot because we don't want to push that down. We want that to come up. I'm going to float the back of his body and outside his tail. So here's his tail. I'm just going to float like this. I know it's going to look like a polka dot, but when we tap in, we'll tap over some of it. I'm going to come up here. Long brush. I think I had the right brush, huh? Okay, Jennifer, it's on my Facebook. It will be there for probably another hour and a half, two hours. I put a flyer on my Facebook and it's always the first comment. It's up until right after class. It's always the first comment. So you might have to scroll through the comments. This, I don't want to make any promises, so don't hold me to it. I, I may just write up the instructions and put them out. 
um, as a happy Easter to you all. I just don't want to promise I'm going to get to it right away because I hate paperwork. And we'll come up here. But that's my intention. Will it happen? Uh, I'm not so sure. And then we're going to come and we're going to float the very bottom of his feet. Now you see how I just made him really dimensional? I made him really dimensional just with that dark. Okay. You're welcome. I wanted to make his arm dimensional. So I just want not where it hits the letter, just the tip of the hand. Okay. So see how he's getting really dimensional? Floating is one of the things I do in every single one of my pieces. Okay? So this is what I'm going to say to you. Floating's important. Floating's very important to dimension. Practice. Practice, practice, practice. Wet, blot, load, blend. Get a coloring book. Get um, a piece of paper. And just get a piece of paper and say, wet, blot, corner load, blend, and just practice floating. Okay? Believe me, it will help you immensely. And you have to, you have to keep doing it. <laughs> Good. Save it to your pictures. Unless it'll come down in a little while. Okay, a little bit of cactus flower. Now, I use a rigger. I'm going to show you what a rigger is. This is a rigger. It looks like a round brush. And it is. It's a round brush, a liner, a flat brush, all in one. I'm going to come in. And you can use it. And you can pick up your paints and you can use it as a liner, okay? You can hold it back in your hand and use it as a round. And you can take your paints from the side, wiggle your brush, and you'll now have a flat brush, okay? So here's my liner. Make sure I'm in. Make sure here's my round and here's my flat. Now you can control this brush with pressure. So I'm flat. I can be um, a flat brush, a liner, all in the same stroke. See what I can do? And that's what makes this brush so wonderful. And they're not expensive. They're inexpensive. My lettering I, I think they're five dollars. Okay, I love this brush. Okay, so now you know I love my brush. So I'm going to take some cactus flower. And I'm going to flatten my rigger. And I'm going to base coat my nose. So I'm just going to come in. It's like a little triangle. little nose going on it. I'm going to take a dry brush. Now we, we're leaving that. I need that to dry for a minute. That's why I'm walking away from it. And let me get more hemp cactus flower. Let me get a little bit of deep. You need a little bit of deep burgundy and a little bit of cactus flower. And again, you can use any of the three brushes that I told you. I'm going to pick up some deep burgundy and I'm going to pick up some cactus flower just so that I have both. Because I don't want it as dark as deep burgundy, but I don't want it as light as cactus flower. 
I'm just going to pull some off. So I'm kind of making a lighter burgundy. And I'm just going to dry brush the inner ear. I'm just creating it. Go with the shape. Don't touch the edges. Okay. I'm just dry brushing. And I'm following the shape up and down. Okay. I'm going to put another coat on my nose. And while that's drying, I'm going to take, if you don't have another deer foot, I have two deer foots. If you don't have another deer foot, take your paper towel and really, really wipe it out till you see no more water. Okay, so now you need toffee which you should have out. You need a little bit of warm white. And just have honey brown out just in case. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up toffee on the heel, warm white on the toe. I'm gonna bounce it off. I have a lot more toffee. My toffee goes all the way to here. And then I have warm white there. And I'm gonna just tap my tail. Okay, see how I come over so it's now, if it's too light, just pick up a little bit of honey on the same brush and just tap over it and that'll tone it down. You want it to be lighter, but there you go. Okay. Let's do a quick float on the bottom of the nose. Your nose should absolutely be dry of deep burgundy. Now, I don't know if you can see, I have very little paint on the corner of my brush. So when I blend it, I wet, I blot, that's my load. Look at how little I have. It's just a very, very, and look at how wide my brush is. It's very little on my corner. And that's how you control it. I'm just going to float the bottom of my nose. Okay. We need black. We have black. Now you can use your liner or you can use your rigger. Either one. I'm going to end up using both, and I'll show you why. When I do my eyes and my lashes, you're going to go from the paints. You're going to blot. Okay. When you use a liner, wet, blot, and pull from the side. Don't twirl in your paint. You'll ruin your bristles. You'll break them at the ferrule. A little bit of paint. When you use a, a liner straight up and it'll give you a nice thin line. I'm going to make sure my hand is not in your way. I'm going to line my eye, line my lashes. If you're on just the tip of your bristle, you will have a nice thin line. I'm going to come in and I'm going to line my eyeball and I'm going to line my mouth. Then I'll come in with my rigger. I'll flatten my rigger. And if you don't have a rigger, you can use a flat brush. Just make sure it's a really small flat brush. You don't want to use a liner. You'll have too many brush strokes. I'm just going to come in. I'm going to fill in that eye. Okay. 
I'm just filling in that eye. I'm going to let that dry for a minute. I'm going to paint our bow. So you need cactus flower, you need deep burgundy, and you need warm white. Now, on your line drawing, the bow was there, so you can put it, transfer it in. I'm just going to take my brush, my rigger, I'm going to flatten it. The first thing he gets is he gets the line around his neck which is the ribbon that holds the bow. My bow is a pretty easy. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to make a loop. So it's a one loop is smaller and one loop is bigger. And then I'm going to come from here and I'm going to make a bigger loop. They come from the same point. And then I'm going to come in. And if you're having a hard time pulling your paint, just put a little bit of water in your brush and blot it. And that'll give you, um, your brush will move better. Your paint will move better. I'm just going to do my ribbons. And then I'm going to come in while my paint is wet and pick up some burgundy. I'm just going to drag some, oh, not that heavy. I'm just going to drag some burgundy in. And if I get too heavy, I'll just add some pink to it. If it's dry, see up here it's dry, that's why it's getting so heavy. So you just come in with the pink and you pull the pink over it and it'll just lighten it. And then I'm going to come in with the white and I'll drag some white in. Oh, that's quite heavy, huh? Now, when it's that heavy, it's heavy because the pink is dry underneath. So you might want to add some, um, another coat of pink and work right there. And then I'll come in with the pink and right here where everything connects, I'll just make a knot and while it's wet, and I'm not cleaning my brush in between, I'll just drag some burgundy at the bottom. I'll stay on camera. And then I'll bring in some white at the top so that I have a knot. It's a real easy bow. Don't make it more than it is. And if you're more comfortable floating, which nobody ever tells me that. <laughs> Thanks, Brenda. And you don't have to have a pink bow. You can have any color bow. You can take any of these colors and put it in your bow. Okay? So now we're going to come in and we're going to float. We're going to float the back of the eye and the top of the nose, and I have to turn upside down, but your piece should be the same as mine. When you paint, when you float the back of the eye, you're not along the edge. So see how I'm following the shape, but I'm not touching the back edge. 
so that you can still see the black there. And then I'm going to float the top of the nose, which does touch the edge. Okay. It's starting to look like a little bunny, huh? Sometimes it's just the little teeny tiny things that make all the difference. Now, when you have a shine in the eye, which is the last thing, it's not a polka dot. I know people take their stylus so they take the back of their brush. It's a smudge. So I pick up a little bit of white on my rigger and I drag it side to side. It's a smudge. You see that? It's this way. It's not a polka dot. It's a smudge. That shines are smudges. You see that? So it's it's a little bit different. Now, just just give me ten more minutes. I just want to go through quickly what we did. We did base coating. We did floating. Remember, wet blot load blend. Dark makes the item recede. Light brings it towards us. We dry brushed the center of each letter, and we came over here. We stippled. You got a lot in this in this piece. We stippled. We dry brushed his ears. We used a liner for his lashes and a rigger. We created a ribbon and we created dimension with burnt umber. Okay? Now, if after class you want to play, it's fun. So you can come in and say, I want to put designs on my letters. So you can come in. I know I'm going to regret doing this because I'm going to have to finish it. <laughs> so you might come in and say, oh, I want polka dots. Use any color that's on your palette. So you might want to put designs on all your letters. This is a piece that now, because I started it, it's going to sit here. And you might say, okay, so I did polka dots here. I might want, let's see, uh, I have blue here. So I might want stripes. And I'm just using my rigger. And they're light. So it's something you might want to do. Do you have to? No. Is it another option to play? Yes. Okay. Totally up to you. So that's an option to, to play. You can do any shape. You can do hearts. You can do polka dots. You can do stripes. You can do plaid. You can do diamonds. You get it. This, there's so many things you can do. Okay. You can do... I'll show you what we did the other night. Let me get some yellow. And I just use the colors that are in here. So... You can do... I did a dot. And then I did little flowers. So I just took my brush and I just pulled out from here. And I just went around and I have little sunbursts. Okay? And that's just a quick one. But that would be fun. You can do, there's so much you can do. You can do plaid. And you can leave it with nothing. So here it is with nothing. It's beautiful. So don't feel like you have to do this. This is just an extra thing. Let me just do this one and then I will show you next class. Now, on Monday, I couldn't remember what we were doing in April. We will be here in April. I'll give you the dates. We are here. 
My intermediate class is April 5th. And my beginner class is April 15th. So my intermediate class, which I couldn't remember, is this piece. I did it on a journal. It's just, it's my so soaked inventory. Um, so we'll stencil. I use styling paints. This is a faux um, leather journal. Michaels makes them, Michaels has them. But you can do this flower on anything. And if you want to paint on leather and you don't have style and paint, you can use paint adhesion medium. Okay? So this is a really, really great piece. My beginner piece, and it's a beginner piece. I know it doesn't look it, but it is. And that's my beginner piece. Okay? This is all stroke work. These are just strokes. So there's not a lot of floating and stuff. All right, this can be done on anything you want, okay? Um, I will tell you, so that's April 5th. This is April 15th. The other one is April 5th. May, huh? So now you know I'm here in May, too. May, we're doing, oh, wait, you don't want to have nothing there. We're doing, I'm doing a tablet stand for my intermediate class and I'm doing um, a phone stand for my beginner class. So if you want to do it on the same surface that I have, get those. Viking sells them. Um, I don't know if Pinecraft does. I'll double check. Um, I'll show them to you next class. They will... So I'm just giving you the heads up for surfaces. Okay. So, if you are doing this on a board, what color background would you use? Oh, thank you, Brenda. If I were doing this on a background, I would probably do some sort of wood grain background, or I would stain it um, with Vintage Effects White. Or Vintage, Vintage Effects is a wonderful stain. Um, you could do burgundy. Um, and you could not do the designs here. You can do, do the designs on a board. So there's a lot you can do with that. But I would do either a very light background or a very dark background. So, But I would wash it. So if you don't have vintage effects, wash it. Wash burgundy or wash white. White lightning, which I don't think they make anymore. I think they've bumped over to vintage effects. If you have white lightning, you can use white lightning. We use that. We used to use that a lot. Tracy Morrow sells both what? Oh, Tracy. Oh, she's going to yell at me. Tracy sells the phone stands and the, um, and the tablet stands. She's TracyMorrow.net. She's TracyMorrow.net. And she ships from Canada, but her shipping is really, really reasonable, and she'll pop them right out. I'll tell her tonight. <laughs> so, um, thank you, Bev, for saying that. And they're really pretty pieces. Both of them are really pretty pieces. And then, I don't know what we're doing in June. I don't know if we'll be here in June. So, so that's where we stand. I'm going to pop you around. I'm going to tell you thank you so much for being here with me. I'm very lucky that you all spend that time with me. So let me pop you around. I get pretty good at this, huh? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so that's me. So thank you all for being here. If you painted with me, pop me off a picture. I would love to see it. Thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, private message me. Or contact the library and the library will get in touch with me. All right. Thank you all. Good night. Happy, happy Easter. I won't see you before Easter, so happy, happy Easter. Good night.